Today we're at Gold Mountain Trail in Big Bear, just across the lake or across from the lake right off of Highway 18. We're going to give a complete overview of the trail. We're going to show you every bump, every rock, every ledge, everything that's difficult as well as the easy parts so you can decide if this trail is scary enough or too scary for you. Even though they rank this as a black diamond most difficult trail, Gold Mountain really isn't all that difficult. There are some rocky spots, there are some bumpy areas, there are some spots that you're going to have to stop and think about, but overall it's not that bad. It's about uh, four miles long. I've read online some trail information sites saying it's 14 miles long. No, it's three and a half to four miles long. You can complete this trail in just a couple of hours if you don't have any problems. Any stock Jeep can do Gold Mountain. Might be more difficult with a stock Jeep. I did it one of my very first runs in the Nata Rubicon before it was even officially dubbed the Nata Rubicon when it was all stock with a lot of help and I did get a little damage. So it is doable in a stock Jeep, uh, but you got to be careful. You definitely don't want to do this trail alone. Uh, it's not that difficult again, but if something happens, you could get stuck. You don't want to be up there alone. So this is going to be a complete trail guide. I'm going to show you every ledge, every rock, every hard spot uh, on the uh, dash cam that will be recording most of the way. You'll be able to see the GPS coordinates down at the bottom uh, through the entire thing, so you'll know where everything is. All right, here we go. First little section is uh, actually the first mile or so is flat fire road. There's a, a little bit of steep sections, a couple of sharp switchbacks. Uh, any truck can make it up in, in this section, still in two wheel drive. This first uh, mile or so is also uh, a couple of steep ledges, a little sh shelf roady. But it's wide enough so that you don't have to fear uh, flying off the edge. Uh, although in most areas it's not wide enough for two Jeeps if somebody's coming in the opposite direction. You can run Gold Mountain in either direction. You can start it on Highway 18 like we did and run it up, which is the normal way. You can also start it on 3N16, which is where we will be ending today, and run it backwards or down. Most people like running it the normal way up, which is what we're doing today. Most people like that better because it's a little more difficult that way. Getting up the ledges is more challenging than going down the ledges. And some of these switchbacks are kind of sharp and steep. I have a stick shift, so I'm gonna go into low just because getting up slowly around this one is difficult. Kind of bumpy area, tight turn, and another tight kind of steep switchback with some rocks. This road can be a lot more challenging if it's wet or muddy, or if it's snowy. I've done it in the snow once. I do not like the snow because I do not like sliding around, especially on these narrow roads. You generally will get more snow on the back side coming down than you get going up. Another bumpy spot. Ooh. This first mile or so has got, uh, after the switchbacks, got several sections, uh, just nice, relatively smooth road here. You definitely want to air down for this trail, if for nothing more, just to smooth it out, because it is real bumpy. But there are some rocky ledges that will be hitting in a ways that uh, airing down will definitely help. Also, even though you, couldn't, uh, you can do it in a stock Jeep, disconnecting will also be very helpful. Again, for, those, for the few obstacles that there are, uh, that articulation will help quite a bit. You do not have to disconnect, but it would definitely be helpful. Uh, I've done it stock, it wasn't easy. I've led groups up here where we had uh, full-size trucks, Toyotas, 
Raptors. Uh, they all made it, some with damage, busted uh, tailpipes, broken steering components, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, it's tough if you've got a full-sized four-wheel drive truck that's not lifted, uh, but it's doable. Any modified Jeep should make it no problem with just a little bit of skill. It doesn't take a lot of skill. You have to pick your line in a few spots. You may need a spotter in several spots. The road's getting a little rougher, a little bumpier. rockier you do not need lockers for this trail like I said I did it stock I had no lockers because this is not a Rubicon although I've got a rear locker now it helps but not necessary there's not a lot of loose areas. Uh, there's not a lot of areas where you're going to be getting a tire up into the air. So uh, definitely doable without lockers. And we're uh, coming up on the first obstacle right now. It doesn't really have a name. I think we normally call it that first obstacle on Gold Mountain. And it's a bit intimidating. This is the first obstacle. You can uh, go up a few different ways. You can go up here on the right along that tree. It looks tough, but actually that's one of the easier lines. The other way up, uh, you can go up the middle here, or you can come up this section here. Far left used to be the easiest. Now it's more dug out because it used to be easy, so everybody was going up, it's dug out now. So it's all intimidating, but all very doable. Man, he made it up pretty easy. Did you have your lockers on? Rear. Rear locker only. And I'm gonna try the tree side. We'll see how that goes. All right, so we're gonna go up by the tree. that right side against the tree wasn't bad at all it is more off camber than either of the other sides a lot of people don't like that it wasn't all that off camber I did have my rear locker on but I climbed it right up and again I'm in a stick shift so it's a bit tougher in a stick shift but it wasn't that bad so it seems like as of today the far left side and the right side by the tree are the two easier lines but it can change every time it rains and every time a big group goes through it changes and now we're coming up on the next obstacle 100 yards away from that one we were just at another tough spot most people either go up on the right side along here or squeeze by that tree and go up the left side through that little cut that's a really uh, angled rock there and up that way. I think that's probably the easier way as long as you don't hit that tree, which I did not long ago. I still have a dent in my door to prove it. Got to work your way up. This is probably, well, it's, it's not much tougher than the previous spot, which is less than 100 yards behind us, but uh, it's longer. It's uh, going to take you longer to get up. So we're going to go up the left side, going to ride that little, almost vertical little rock. Was that metal?
right, here we go again. Stack some rocks. Try it again, a little more to the center. That was much easier. That was a lot easier, almost up the middle. Those were the two toughest spots on the trail. Uh, there's a couple other bumpy sections, and then there's, of course, the rock garden, which you'll see in a few minutes. The rock garden is almost exactly one mile from that uh, second obstacle that we just cleared. But once you make it this far, you've done the hardest parts. Current elevation is just over 7,500 feet. We're gonna go up a little bit more when we get to the top of the mountain. more kind of steep rocky sections. the obstacles and the rock garden it's a mixture of rough bumpy spots like that one and a flat road like what's right here in front of us just on and off on and off nothing real difficult but it'll slow you down Ooh. another steep rocky spot it's flat smooth rock not slick can get a grip on it unless it's wet or snowy not easy especially if you're a beginner but it's not difficult not super difficult at least nice section to stop there for lunch nice wide open area it's a couple spots like that that's one of them more rocky sections Just coming into view is the rock garden. You can see it up ahead, up above. You see the white area there. I don't know what it's, why it's there. It's, it's very unusual. It does look natural. It's like a giant shale rock slide. I don't know if it's from a mine, like mine tailings from up above it, or if it's just natural. If anybody knows, leave a comment, because I'd love to know. They call it a rock garden, but it's not your typical Holcomb Creek John Bull kind of rock garden. It's little rocks, mostly shale, and or not shale, but shale-like, thin, small shards of rock. So I'll try to record the sound. It sounds like you're driving over bones or glass. It's Some people love it, most people hate it. It's like uh, fingernails down a chalkboard, the sound. Uh, some of the rocks are sharp. Some people do occasionally uh, lose a tire. Now there's two ways into the rock garden. I'll try to show them both, the, the lower way in and the normal way in. The lower way in is a little tougher. Uh, the middle way, second way in is the way most people go through. Uh, once you're in there, there are harder lines you can take if you choose. There's some logs that you watch out for to the entrance. That's how you know you're there. You can go around the rock garden. You don't have to go through it. We're gonna make a right turn into the rock garden. If you just stay on the road, you can bypass it and the roads hook back up, I don't know, in half a mile or so. So you don't have to go through the, the rock garden. Most people do, but the first few times I came up, when I was a beginner, I chose to go around it. 
and then I finally went through it, and then I thought, well, it's no big deal. Why did I go around it all these times? Okay, this is the entrance to the lower section, the more difficult section. There's two logs that you'll see off to the right of the road. One, two. And you pull off to the right of the road, so the road is right there. So you come in, you make a right at the two logs for the lower, more difficult way in. That brings you into the rock garden lower section. As you can see, there are some large boulders, such as that one, but mostly small, hand-sized is what that is. And then you can go in and meet up at the upper section where we'll be going, which cuts across right through behind those trees and across. So we'll go to the second section, the second entrance. After that first entrance, go a little further. We're gonna go in the middle second entrance. The second entrance is a little distance from that first one, maybe an eighth of a mile or so. And you'll see the two really big logs you can see him straight ahead, right in front of where John's turning. That's the entrance to the... This is the normal entrance to the rock garden. You see the two big logs. Those are giant logs. One, two. And this brings you into the rock garden. And into the rock garden. I don't know if you can hear the sound. Going over these rocks, it's like driving over bones, the way it sounds. The bones are just, and the rocks are just grinding on each other. No real big rocks. I mean, there are. You can go around them, or you can go seek them out. Some more difficult lines up above to the left. It's mostly just these small, I want to call it shale. I don't think it is shale, but it sounds like it. Just a pile of rocks. And you can hear, eh, I don't like that sound. It's really not difficult. There's a little road, pretty much. You can just follow right through it. You can go find harder lines up to the left or to the right. But otherwise, just watch out for the big sharp rocks. Breeze right through. Piece of cake, back to flat road. Another spot to stop here for lunch. A lot of people like to stop for lunch in the rock garden. Just pull off to one side if you do so that you're not blocking the trail. It's a good place to eat. Lots of shade trees, big uh, logs to sit on. Right after the rock garden, the road, uh, again, we're, the regular road continues around the rock garden to the left. Remember, we turned right, came into the rock garden. So right after the rock garden, it's a little dug out here. A little dugout section is probably tougher than the rock garden. Nothing worse than the other bumpy spots we've uh, been through since the uh, two difficult obstacles. Right after the rock garden, another eighth of a mile. The road splits again. Uh, off to the right where we're going is a little bit of a bumpier section. You can continue straight or to the left and go around it and meets back up in a few hundred yards. It's just a loose section. Kind of like the rock garden but it's a steeper climb and it's a little dug out up there if I recall. We'll see in a minute but you can just stay to the left or, and uh, go around it. But if you went through the rock garden, because we haven't met back up with the main trail yet, so if you went off to the right to go to the rock garden, then you might as well just do this section. Yeah, kind of dug out here, it's kind of loose. 
See a lot of spinning tires here, usually. Keep moving. All right, now we're back to the main trail, which went around that little section. Now I have not had my lockers on most of this trail. The only time I put the, well, I only have one locker, rear locker only, uh, going up the tough obstacle when I was spinning and sliding all over. Lockers have not been on most of the time. You don't really need them, most sections, unless you start getting hung up like I was on one of those obstacles. Uh, John and Mark said when they were going up the hard spots, they both got Rubicons. They only had their rear lockers on as well. They didn't even use their front lockers. More dugout, steep, not too steep, but climbing. Dugout with some rocks right in the middle. Just went over one. And sharp left turn. I usually have to three point it. Two door didn't have to. But if you're in a four door, three point nits, you might have to three point it. Loose rocks, dug out, it's not difficult. Surely not as difficult as the hard obstacles we already went over. Very dug out right here. Oh, little rock there coming up on another spot where it's uh, big and wide open you can stop for lunch. This right here is where the, if you leave the road, the main trail to do the rock garden, this is where we meet back up with the main trail. So check your GPS coordinates. If you're going around, you're going to be coming in off the left. So that big tree right there would be on your right. So if, you're, if you went around and the rest of your group went through the rock garden or vice versa, this is where you want to meet back up. There's a couple of rock stacks to point it out, but uh, just look for the big tree. And I think it's really the only place on the trail where another little road meets in. Almost the only place. So, so we're over halfway through the trail. It's about an hour and a half in. Uh, and we're a small group, but we did stop spend some time at those obstacles to get over them. Not too long, but hour and a half, at least halfway through. And we're coming up on one of the more difficult spots on the trail. Not as bad as the spots we've already been through, but this is probably the last real obstacle. And right after this is where most people stop for lunch. It's a, a nice big flat area for lunch just past this. I always get hung up here. I don't know why. Just never read it right. Let's see if we can do it today. A couple of big rocks dug out. Real big. Piece of cake. All right. All right, this is the best place for lunch right here. Check the GPS coordinates. Huge open area. We've gotten 25 or more Jeeps up here for lunch. Lots of places to pull off, lots of shade. So this big open area where we just had lunch uh, is pretty much the top of the mountain. Elevation is just over 8,200 feet. 
So from here, it's all downhill. There's no real obstacles per se from here down. There's a couple more bumpy spots, but nothing difficult at all. Uh, so it's basically from here a mostly leisurely slow run back down. There's a lot of uh, switchbacks, uh, a couple off camber spots, and a couple of rocky spots. But again, no. Uh, most people probably wouldn't even consider them obstacles, but they will slow you down a little. So it took us just at, uh, we're about two hours in. Uh, we just had about a 15 minute lunch break. So uh, we should be done, I'm gonna guess, in about another 30 to 45 minutes. We will see. About a mile or so down from the top. Again, mostly easy road, just bumpy. A little dugout in a couple of spots. One of those last little dugout sections right before the end of the trail. Not tough. Shouldn't need a spot th through there, but definitely got to hit it slow. We are now at the end of the trail. We're at 3N16, where uh, Gold Mountain 3N69 ends. So we finished the trail in just over uh, two and a half hours. Small group of three Jeeps. We didn't run into any traffic on the trail which is unusual, uh, maybe not, this is a weekday, but on the weekend you're definitely gonna run into traffic here. As you can see, it's not that difficult. There were a couple of challenging spots that we all had to get out and think about, but uh, overall, not very difficult at all.